House is in the house. Public League Power Westinghouse is two wins away from its first state title. The Warriors face upset-minded New Trier. The Trevians ousted number three Proviso East in the Super. Westinghouse and New Trier next. Good morning and welcome to Carver Arena in downtown Peoria. March Madness about to reach epidemic proportions. It's semifinal number one as Westinghouse takes on New Trier. The winner goes to the state championship game tonight. The Warriors, the top ranked team still left in the field. New Trier, well, if they need inspiration, they need only look back as far as last year's double A championship game when Schomburg knocked off Thornwood. They'll be trying to do the same kind of thing here today. And here for the call of this morning's action, Tom Stocker and Bill Hitt. Thank you very much, Lee. Indeed, in this first semifinal game, two schools, both in the quest of their respective schools' first ever state championship. And Bill, I've been really impressed with the way both of these squads have gone about a very business-like matter, both on the court and off the court this weekend. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Tom. Both of these teams seem to be on a mission. They're very professional. I think Westinghouse feels it has some unfinished business from 2000 and New Trier just wants a chance at a state championship. Let's see how these two teams made it here to the final four in this first semifinal game. First of all, for the Trevians of New Trier, beating Gordon Tech in the sectional semis, then a win over Niles Notre Dame to win the sectional championship. A stunning win at the United Center last Tuesday over Proviso East, and then yesterday in the quarterfinal round, knocking off uh, Central Suburban rival Highland Park 59-48. to Now for Westinghouse, a tough road in the Chicago Public League playoffs with a win over Crane in the final, a win over Von Steuben, and of course, what would be termed the super sectional, but the CPL championship uh, over Farragut, 62-58, and they dismantled a gutsy Glenbar North team yesterday, 71-48. When you take a look at these two teams, both very much a team-oriented group. First of all, for New Trier, it's difficult to point towards any one player, but you got to admit right now that Ted Rosinski has definitely picked his game up in the tournament. Absolutely, Tom. Ted has been their leader on the court. He uh, has had big tournament games, averaging almost 17 points a game. Certainly uh, guards their best uh, offensive player at times as well. He has led their team in both scoring and rebounding each of their last four tournament games. Meanwhile, for Westinghouse, they'll run nine or ten at you as well. Just before the Chicago Public League Championship, Darius Glover said, I'm the leader on this team. And even yesterday, Chris said, said, yeah, I think he is. You know, he gives them a presence in the inside, Tom, that everybody has to pay attention to. You have to guard him, and you have to keep him off the boards. Westinghouse likes to run a very high-risk offense. New Trier will run the motion offense. What do you think New Trier's keys to the game are in this game? Well, I think offensively, the decisions they make with the ball are key. They're going to look to run at times. They have to know when to pull it back and run an offense. And defensively, they can, uh, cannot allow guard penetration. And when the guards get into the paint, they pass off. They're vulnerable. And, and they just have to do a, a great job on the boards. No second shot baskets for Westinghouse. Meanwhile, for the Westinghouse Warriors, you take a look. They got to control it inside. Yeah, they might have a little bit of an advantage in the paint. They have got to control the paint offensively and defensively. And and on defense, Westinghouse has to identify the shooters from Westing from New Trier, make sure they, they contest every three-point shot. And you know we're going to see a lot of uh, pressure in the backcourt from Westinghouse. New Trier will be prepared for that. Meanwhile, Bill, I think with the way these two teams run their offenses, I think turnovers and points off turnover could be really a crucial turning point. Absolutely. Um, I think both of these teams function well. They're very disciplined. I think the key is not so much the turnovers, but what each team does with the turnovers. Uh, if they can convert them, that could be crucial. Coming up, we're going to meet both squads and tip it off in semifinal game number one here at Carver Arena. First of all, we're going to hear now from your local sponsors.
I did Welcome back that. to Carver Arena as we're getting ready for semifinal game number one between New Trier and Westinghouse. Where are these two schools located? Well, obviously, Westinghouse right there on the west side of Chicago. Up in Winnetka, where there is New Trier, once known as New Trier East, when they had East and West, and now just simply New Trier. Let's go now and meet these two teams. Let's go to public address announcer Paul Herzog. Good morning, basketball fans. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association and the city of Peoria, welcome to the semifinal action. Class AA boys featuring today the Trevians of Winnetka, New Trier, and the Warriors of Chicago Westinghouse. Before we meet the lineups at this time, we ask you to please stand address the flag with your hand over your heart as Matthew Adams winger from Peoria Woodruff leads us in our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in For Chicago Westinghouse, a forward of 5'10", senior, number 12, Clyde Crosby. At center for the Trevians, a 6'2", senior, 50, Bob Anderson. Another forward for the Warriors, a 6'4", senior, 44, Darius Glover. One of three guards for New Trier, a 6'3", senior, three, Josh Goodman. At center for Westinghouse, a 6'5", senior, 24, Richard Russell. And a guard for the Trevians, a 6'2", senior, 23, James Romy. And a guard for the Warriors, a 5'11 senior, 10, Jamal Brown. The third guard for New Trier is 6'1 junior, 33, Brett Sortle. And the other guard for Chicago Westinghouse is 6'4 sophomore, number 30, Jamarcus Ellis. Coaching your Trier in his sixth season. The, the coaches in this first semifinal game, Rick Malnati in his sixth year, 136 victories now in the tournament for the second time. Had the team in the quarterfinals two years ago, losing to East St. Louis Senior. He says he still has nightmares of that game. There is Chris Head finishing his fourth year. Over 100 victories so far this year. Led his team to a second place finish in 2000, losing to champion West Aurora by three points in that title game. The early tempo of this game, Bill, is going to be really interesting to see if Westinghouse tries to go with that run when you can, fast break offense, and watch New Trier's very patient motion offense. Yeah, I think you're, you're correct on that, and, and my guess is that Chris Head is going to go out and get him full court. I think we're going to see him very aggressive in the zone. That's one of the things that I haven't seen from New Trier yet, how they handle an aggressive zone. That'll be interesting. 
And we had our ceremonial presentation of the game ball. And we're so we're about set as the Westinghouse Warriors wearing white. They're the home team in this game. Nutria wearing the dark blue. Westinghouse out of the Red West Conference. Rick Malnati said, heck, they'd probably kick us to the Red Central. We were two and four against the public league this year. Yeah, Rick has a great amount of confidence in his team, and he's played a, a wonderfully strong schedule. This, this ought to be a, a very closely fought game. As you see, Ted Rosinski take the floor along with his teammates, Bob Anderson there. Brett Sortle had a key role in the quarterfinal win over Highland Park yesterday. That was an emotional game for those two North Suburban schools. Here we go. With the tap tracked down by Westinghouse and that talented sophomore Jamarcus Ellis and Jamal Brown now will bring it up short. They quickly waste a little time in getting it to Glover, but back out now to Jamal Brown. He puts up the three around and out. And strong rebound for Brett Sortle. And he was fouled on the play by Kralai Crosby. Let's look at the starting lineups once again with the Drew going with Rosinski Anderson and a three guard front with Goodman, Romy, and Sortle. Meanwhile, Crosby and Glover on the front line for Westinghouse. Russell is the center, and the guards are Brown and Ellis. Ellis, I still think, is going to be one of the keys in this game when you look at what he did yesterday in the quarterfinal round game with 11 points, six rebounds, four assists, and five steals. He's a very active player on the court, both underneath the basket on the wing. First touch of the ball here now for New Trier. Sortle about 28 feet away from the basket. Gets it back from the point. Sticky defense from Westinghouse. Out front, James Roman. Very active T3 uh, defense. They got the pass inside, but Anderson was caught up high. Right. Um, Nutria is going to look to get the ball in the paint and then kick it out, and that's going to be the same kind of strategy we have with Westinghouse. The officials, Fred Allman, Thomas Flynn, and Wayne Lair calling the plays here this afternoon in semifinal game number one. Jamal Brown, as he got into the front court, trying to get in front of him, Josh Goodman, and instead Goodman picked up the foul. You know, Tom, both of these teams do a wonderful job of applying pressure at different po points on the court. That makes it very difficult for the offense to decide when and where to attack. Clyde Crosby gets it over down to Jamal Brown. Brown, an honorable mention, All-Stater. Clyde Crosby working around the perimeter. Nutria looks to be stacking back in that paint right now, trying to keep them on the perimeter. And forced shots just like that. A missed outside shot from Clyde Crosby. And Nutria will run if they have the chance. They have the chance, and Ted Rosinski puts them on the board. But Westinghouse, Glover missing in close. The outlet pass broken up by Ellis. Down to Glover, and he lays it up and in. You know, a lot of people are thinking this is a, a, a new Trier team that doesn't like to run. They do. They like to get the ball up the court quickly. The problem is making decisions when you get it up the court. And remember, new Trier had all of six turnovers in the victory yesterday over Highland Park already. So far in this game, they've got three. Ellis out top of the key. Watched by Rosinski, and Ellis hits the three. One of the things we haven't seen from Westinghouse so far in the tournament is a, is a perimeter attack. That may be a big key for them today. And walking with the ball in the backcourt, James Romy, four turnovers already in this ballgame for Nutria. Yeah, fortunately it hasn't resulted in, in more than five points, but that's going to be big. Um, a couple of those have been unforced turnovers too. 2 lead Westinghouse with the lead in the basketball. Jamal Brown. Out at the point to Crosby. Here is Ellis missing for the three. And the rebound to Trier. And it's brought up court by Brett Sortel. Rosinski, another one of those unforced turnovers, just threw it away. Yeah, it, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big game for the kids, obviously. And, and the good thing is that you have 32 minutes to play it. You settle down and, and do some of those things that you're capable of doing. Brett Sordo taken out of the game, and Terry Coughlin, the 6'2 senior, comes in for the Trevians. 
So a three-point lead in the first quarter for Westinghouse. Jamal Brown out to Crosby. Zone defense there from Lutrier. Glover fades it down inside and a little push inside as Russell was trying to get open for the pass. And it's going to go on. Let's double check that foul. And so Nutrier now picks up their second team foul. Guys, ball's not in yet. Foul is on Josh Goodman. The referee indicated a 33, and Sordal had just left the game. It turned out it was. The foul on Goodman now coming in for Westinghouse, Anthony Bennett, a 6'1 senior, called a slasher by coach Chris Head, and he comes in replacing Clyde Crosby. Out front, Anthony Bennett over on the wing to Ellis in the lane. The pass down low, Russell looking for Darius Glover, and Glover got the foul. It's kind of a two chance. You either get the shot or you get the foul. They did a real good job. They did a little high-low on that, got the ball up to Russell at the high post, and he kicked it down underneath. Nick Nikitas, the 6'5 senior now in the game, number 25 for Nutrier, picked up the foul. And three now on Nutrier. What we've seen so far defensively from Nutrier is, is a real help side defense. They identify perimeter scores, and, and those that are not perimeter scores, they just sag off into the middle. It, it, it makes it look like a zone, but it's really just a help side man-to-man. Glover -man. gets his first two. It's a 6-2 lead. Right now, Westinghouse leading in points off turnover, 6-5. And off the missed shot, rebound Jamal Brown. He pushes it up court. On the wing, driving inside, Anthony Bennett. The carom, though, gathered in by Glover. He missed the turnarounder, and it's out of bounds to Dutrier. This IHSA broadcast is brought to you by Country Insurance and Financial Services. Real people, real answers, real quick. You're supposed to do that and step through the trap, and, and obviously he went through the man. Got Bobby Anderson in, into the game now, Tom, for uh, Nutrier. He's a, one of their better rebounders. They're looking probably to do a, a better job on the defensive boards. Just over a minute gone. Westinghouse with a six-point lead. And a long, it's a three. It's a three for Jamal Brown, his first point of the ball game. And all of a sudden now, it's a nine-point lead for the Warriors. Romy out front. Sortle out along the sidelines. From the free throw line, Anderson missed the shot. The new trier gets another chance at it. From the corner, the three good again. Josh Goodman doing what he did in the pivotal third quarter against Highland Park yesterday, hitting a couple of threes. Yeah, you know, what, what new trier needs more even uh, than, than the basket is the confidence. They're, they're lacking that right now. That shot should give someone some confidence back. Ellis, a great job taking it down deep and kicking it back out to Jamal Brown, who has just hit another three. He's got six, and it's a nine-point lead for Westinghouse and a quick 30-second timeout called by the Trevians. You know, we're looking here now at, at uh, the, the pass back. They got the ball inside and kicked it out. It's a big, uh, if, if Westinghouse continues to be strong inside out, it's going to be very difficult. We're looking now at that rotation of the ball down to Josh Goodman, who buries it from the corner. He's been big for them down in, in this tournament so far from the perimeter. It's going to be a load for New Trier if Westinghouse is able to continue to get the penetration inside and then when the defense collapse, kick it back out to an open uh, guard on the perimeter for the three-pointer. Yeah, the penetration is very tough for them to handle. It, it creates problems just as you described, but also creates problems for rebounding. Romy gets it into the front court for the Trevians, who trail by nine, 20 to 11. Romy. Into the corner, here's Rodzinski. He's been quiet for a long time. The rebound bounced just right by him. Couldn't get it in time, and Glover races to the front door. Stripped away as he was going up. Stripped away again from Russell. And Dutrier comes up with it. Quick hands, two quick steals for the Trevians. On the 
wing, Romy. Over again, Goodman, does he have another one? Yes, he does. Goodman with nine, all in this quarter on three three-pointers. A foul after the shot, the bucket is good. And the foul is going to be on Jamarcus Ellis. That was a frustration foul. So it'll be out of bounds for Dutcher with a foul after the shot. Only the second team foul on Westinghouse so far in the half. So this is a key possession here. As they work it around the perimeter. Kick the ball down inside. And it's out of bounds after the steal there by Westinghouse and they want it going out of bounds. Nutria gets it. Fly Crosby back in now for Westinghouse. Yeah, Westinghouse has uh, done a nice job of defending Nutria's inbounds plays. They like to stretch the court, inbound it to a corner and get a quick three. They haven't been able to do that. Nikita's in for Rosinski and also Terry Coughlin has just come in now for Rick Malnati's Nutria champions. They got him trapped in the corner. And the pass out front, tipped away by Ellis. Coughlin kept it alive, and he's got it. Got a little help there from Josh Goodman. Well, Westinghouse is just so active defensively. They make it difficult to rotate the ball. Obviously difficult to get it inside. Very tough there as he tried to get it inside to Anderson. And going to scramble for the ball on the deck. Another alternate possession. And this alternate possession arrow, the lead goes to Westinghouse. But we've got a timeout on the floor here at Carver Arena. Just under five minutes to go in the first half. And we'll be back after we hear from our network sponsors. All right, Tom, thanks a lot. Uh, I was lucky enough to see Rick Malnati play as a Bradley Brave. I was in high school. Uh, our, my high school career uh, uh, paralleled his college career. Rick Malnati was scrappy, he was tenacious, he was never the most talented guy out on the floor unless he was shooting baskets by himself, but he never gave up, he hustled after every loose ball, and I would expect to see that from his team. Uh, they haven't given up yet. Back to you. Josh Goodman hitting another three, 12 points for Goodman, all in this quarter, and it's a three-point ball game right now. Goodman single-handedly bringing Nutrier back in this game. They trail by three. You know, Tom, that's an example. Westinghouse has defended those inbound passes perfectly up until that point, made one mistake. They got the ball into the corner to a shooter, and he, he drained it. Westinghouse leading by nine not so long ago. Ellis out front. Very talented youngster and did just about everything a coach could ask of him in the win yesterday over Glenbard North. From the baseline, an open look for Crosby. Couldn't bury the shot on the rebound. Coughlin gets it ahead to Romy. And now they'll set up the half court attack. Romy, nice fake to get to the baseline. Missed the open jumper. And a foul on Nutrier crashing the boards. Looked to be Bob Anderson. You know, I think that's an example of what Nutria likes to do. They like to push it quickly and then make a decision. Do they do they take it to the basket? Do they run an offense? Anthony Bennett and Randon Williams now checking in for Westinghouse as Crosby and Ellis now head for the Westinghouse bench. You know, I think one of Westinghouse strengths is they are so deep. They have a very great quickness off the bench and they're relentless. They just keep coming at you, coming at you, trying to wear you down. But in this particular matchup, I don't think either team really has a decided depth or bench advantage. No, they're both very strong benches. You're right, Tom. Williams into the corner. It goes to Bennett. Back out to Randon Williams. Bennett from the corner. Got the three. I think if Westinghouse has shown us anything that, that uh, is kind of different, it's how well they've been able to shoot from the perimeter. Tenacious defense from Westinghouse as Nutrier works it around the perimeter of the zone. Coughlin over now to Romy. They find Nikitas, the turnaround shot, good. You know, that, that was great ball movement and excellent defense. That probably was a little taste of just what they did at the United Center last Tuesday night against Proviso East. Here from the baseline, the shot in and out for Richard Russell. And then in the battle for the board, a foul underneath. And 
it's going to be a foul on New Trier's Nick Nikitas, his second. And only, in fact, right now, New Trier, the next foul will put Westinghouse into the bonus. Brandon Williams, a 6'3 senior, getting a couple of tries at the free throw line. You know, I think um, when you look at a game like this, to, to just appreciate the job Chris Head has done with the Westinghouse team, as aggressive as they are defensively, two team fouls. That means they play great position defense, they move their feet, um, they're not reaching in on the ball, they're just tenacious, um, always in good position. Rick Malnati brought Rosinski back in among three substitutions there for New Trier. He's back in the lineup. Williams converts both free throws. And it's a six-point lead at 25-19. So the Trevians, who've used the outside shot, the three-pointer, to get back in this ballgame, and that's the guy that's in it right there, Josh Goodman. Into the front court, out of control, and losing the ball out of bounds, Brett Sortle. You know, he took his head up for a second to look inside, just lost control of the ball. That was still another look of a press from Westinghouse where they, where they changed um, the, the point of attack and double teamed it on the inbounds. Four new trier now, 12. Make that 10 now, 10 turnovers in the basketball game. And Westinghouse turns it over, lost out of bounds by Jamal Brown. And that is turnover number four in the game for Westinghouse. Down in the last few minutes of this first half, the winner goes to tonight's championship game. The loser still will play tonight in the consolation game. In trouble is Brett Sordle. He's double teamed, was able to get it over to Romy. Rosinski brings the ball back out front. And Nutria will try it again with the motion offense, but Rosinski cut in towards the free throw line, and that pass by Romy air mailed out of bounds. You know what? That, that is a, a result of Westinghouse pressure. Rick Malnati's unhappy. You can't make an entry pass from that far away. You've got to bring the ball closer. And, and again, it's a result of the Westinghouse pressure. Looking from Chris Head's demeanor, you would have thought his team was down by six. Into the front court, Crosby. Fires up ahead, Glover drives in for the hoop. The shot spins out, offensive board. Missed underneath by Bennett. And Westinghouse gets another chance as they rescue the ball and get it out to Jamal Brown. Tough on the boards, Westinghouse getting another chance. Brown for the three, long. And the rebound, Rosinski, and he's knocked out of bounds and fouled by Anthony Bennett. You know, Tom, we are really, truly watching a very good high school game. Both of these teams are just going at it relentlessly. You can see the action underneath the, the boards on the rebounding there. Darius Glover comes up from behind, trying to strip the ball, grabs uh, Ted Brzezinski's hand. No face for the, no place for the faint heart under the baskets no. in this game. No, there isn't, and, and it'll continue through this game. Both these teams are not going to give any quarter. A minute 57 to go in the half. And as they try to break the pressure, it's deflected out of bounds off of Anthony Bennett, and the Trevians keep the basketball. This has been a big quarter for New Trier, getting them back in the ball game. In fact, they've outscored Westinghouse in this quarter by one point, 14-13. Glover picked up a foul very quickly, getting his first, just the fourth on Westinghouse. You know, Tom, if you, we saw that uh, graphic on the screen, New Trier shooting uh, considerably better than Westinghouse from the floor, and the difference is the rebounding advantage. Nick Nikitas coming up short on the three-pointer from the top of the key, and coming the other way, Anthony Bennett. Ellis moves to the baseline. Off the glass, too strong. And in the rebound, scrap underneath. It's going to be Glover. Is it Glover? No, it's going to be Ellis crashing the boards, getting the foul. His second foul. You know, he is so active. He, he goes so strong to the basket, and he's got such body control. We have Nutrier stepping up, trying to draw a charge, and he avoids all that contact then and uh, makes just a sophomore mistake uh, going over the back on the rebound. A six-point Westinghouse lead. New Trier with the basketball. Under a minute and a half for the first half. 
Rosinski gets it back out to Romy. Now Brett Sortle over to Goodman. They're very, very patient with the motion offense. They don't try to usually, don't try to force what's not there. No, no. And and uh, they, uh, Westinghouse makes it so difficult for them to skip the ball from one wing to the other, which is a big part of their attack. Under a minute now, Goodman had an open look for a fraction of a second, but all of a sudden Glover was there. Goodman another try. Hey, he it out. 15 points on five three corners in this quarter alone for Josh Goodman. You know, you're supposed to call bank on that. So give him a letter anyways? I guess so. Give him an H. So Westinghouse, it's lead down to three at 25-22. 20 seconds to go in the half. We'll go for the last shot. And these teams have scouted each other so well. They've got the matchups where they want. We're going to probably see uh, the ball come down. They're going to look to isolate Glover on that left wing. Now under six. There's Glover. He gets the shot. A bit strong. Offensive rebound. Ellis. He's got time. He hit it. He hit it just before the buzzer. A big basket for Jamarcus Ellis and Westinghouse. It gives Westinghouse a five-point lead after the first half of basketball here at Carver Arena, but one heck of a second quarter when it looked just like Westinghouse was going to maybe run away with it. Suddenly, out of nowhere, came Josh Goodman off the bench, and he hit five three-pointers in the period for 15 points to keep single-handedly Nutria in this basketball game. He hit some huge shots, but in addition to that, I think he gave them the confidence they need to be able to compete in the second half. Let's go now to our Lee Hall. Okay, thanks. Uh, we're with uh, Chris Head. Uh, Coach, first half, your, uh, your press gave him a little trouble. The quickness, he got in some passing lanes, but they hung right in there with you, down five at the half. And it's no surprise. That, you know, we didn't come expecting to blow them out. You know, they, they didn't make it to the semifinals because it wasn't a bad team. They're a very good basketball team. We just wanted to come into it and at least go into the half up and then make some adjustments once we get into the locker room. And a lengthy little discussion here with DeMarcus Ellis. Can you tell us anything you talked to him about? Just stay with it. Just be confident, play tough, because we're going to need him in the long run. All right, good luck, Coach. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right, back to you. Thank you very much, Lee. At halftime, Westinghouse with a five-point lead. Our halftime festivities continue. Let's hear now from your network sponsors. This is my country. These are my people. This is the world I understand. It's not just talking about service. It's really knowing the people we serve. I know them like the back of my own hand. Country insurance and financial services. Real people, real answers, real quick. Welcome back to Carver Arena. We are at halftime. It's 27-22. Westinghouse with the lead over New Trier. Coming up in game two, it'll be Springfield Landfear against Centralia. Of course, the Orphans, one of the most storied and historic programs in the uh, state of Illinois. We're with uh, an alum, an orphan alum. Bill Castleman played on the 1941 Centralia team, finished third in the state. We're known as the Wonder Five. What was the Wonder Five all about, Bill? Well... I think the uh, students in Centralia, the, the student body, had a club like, and I think they come up with a name, and then they made plaques and pictures of us, you know, and they were the real pushers of it. Of course, then the media picked it up and the newspapers picked it up, and it just kept on and kept on, and we're, that's, that's our name. That's all there is to it. We're proud of it. Yeah. Tell me about uh, one of your more famous teammates, Dyke Edelman, who passed away recently. Well, not much you can say about any more than what's been said about Dyke. He was a gracious fellow. Even at the, uh, his wife said at the end, never caused any trouble. And I don't know, it's hard to explain, but anybody that really knew Dyke never got to big head, come back century of everybody and talk to everybody I I don't know it's just one of a million type of ball player 
Tell us about uh, Centralia basketball. It's been a while since you guys have had success here at state, but Arthur Trout coached three state champions. It's the winningest program in the state of Illinois. Tell us about Centralia basketball back in the heyday, back in the 40s. Of course, they went on to win the state championship the year after you graduated. Yeah, well, you know, they had us pegged for it. And uh, the old ball bounces sometimes the wrong way. But we, over the years, we've had some real good athletes and we've had some good coaches and we've had some good parents and the school gets behind the team and then the town gets involved in it and all the little surrounding towns get involved in it so really it's uh, not a town now it's more of a community fair and uh, every year it seemed like we come up with a pretty good ball player because here again we start young and we we come on up with them and we like I say, we have good coaches, good fans, and we have a lot of dedicated good ball players. What's the mood around town, Ben? Has it been similar to what it was back in the 40s when you were playing? Oh, yeah. Uh, of course, things change. You know that as well as I do. Of course, you weren't there. But uh, we had just as much enthusiasm back in our day as they have now. I don't think we had the following. I'm talking about numbers. We didn't have the following that we do nowadays because, well, economic situation and so on. But we had, we had good following and we had good people. We had two or three clubs in town that they took us to Champaign to see the kids play up there. They took us to St. Louis. When, that's when pro ball just started. Right. And we got to see a couple of pro, pro games. and. Overall, they just kind of took us under their wing, and every other team has come by that we do the same thing. My first game in Centralia High School was 1935, and I've been going ever since. Yeah, well, great. It's good to see you today. The guys in the truck love your pants. Well, I like them too. I like, <laughs> I like bright colors, especially especially Centralia. You coat. bet. Hey, you know they made fun of my blue coat last week. I like the pants too. Well, as long as you like and what the heck yeah what do they know good luck good luck today uh, thank you very much I good talking it. to you always good talking to folks from centralia best nickname around orphans and the girls teams are the orphan annies we'll see them second game here today against the Landfear lions more halftime festivities coming your way from carver arena Carver Arena, where at halftime, Westinghouse leads New Trier 27-22, with the winner going to tonight's state championship game in Class AA. Hi, everybody. Tom Stocker, Bill Hitt, back with you. As we take a look, Bill, at the stats from the first half, neither team shooting particularly well. Westinghouse shooting just 36% in the first half, New Trier 44%. Yeah, one of the things is the rebounds are even, but seven of those uh, 13 for Westinghouse have been offensive rebounds, and a lot of them have resulted in put back, put, put back baskets. The assist edge to New Trier as we look at the other numbers from the uh, first half. 
a big number right there. 11 turnovers for New Trier, who had a total of six in the game against Highland Park yesterday and 11 total against Proviso East Tuesday. And we talked about that before the game as being one of the keys to the ball game. And right now, if there is a single reason why New Trier tra trails in this ball game, it's because of the turnovers and points off of turnovers for Westinghouse. Westinghouse scored 10 points off those turnovers. There you see the leading score is Josh Goodman. All 15 points on five of five outside the arc in the second quarter. Meanwhile, Darius Glover leads with seven balanced scoring, but I think a struggling first half for Jamarcus Ellis, who went just two of six from the field. And I don't think he was the force in the first half that, that Chris Head was hoping the young sophomore would be. No, I, I agree. Um, he, you know, sophomores sometimes can be up and down. I, I look for him to have a big second half. But if you would have told me that they would be five points down New Trier now without Rosinski and Romy having a point I would say that, um, that that would be hard for me to believe I think both of those guys need to step up in the second half for New Trier. Coming up we'll have more from Peoria the state championship playoffs and semifinals after we hear from your local stations. Westinghouse a five-point lead. Let's go now to Lee Hall. All right, Tom, thanks a lot. We're with Rick Malnati. Coach, uh, the quickness of Westinghouse seemed to bother you guys early, but you hung right in there. Good outside shooting. Well, we made some tough shots. We haven't gotten any easy shots, and we're going to have to do a better job in the second half getting some easy shots, handling the ball a little bit better, and their quickness did bother us, but hopefully we made an adjustment and we'll be better in the second half. All right, good luck, Coach. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Lee. Let's take a look now at highlights from the first half, and what got Nutria right back in the ball game was Josh Goodman, five for five outside the arc in the second quarter. Yeah, and they're all from the baseline. They do a great job of finding him there. He gets his feet set up and, and just drills him. See him rotate the ball. That one's from the wing. Um, that's the one he should have had a call bank on. <laughs> Meanwhile, for Westinghouse, Darius Glover, strong move to the hoop. He lowers his shoulder. He's just so strong going to the basket, especially on his right hand. See a great effort, uh, a put back, and then a put back of a put back. And uh, that's been hurting Nutria this whole ball game. Some of those seven offensive reboards they have. Meanwhile, from outside, Jamal Brown showing great touch with that three-pointer as Jamal Brown with a pair of three-pointers in the first half for six. Coming up the third quarter from Carver Arena, as we hear now from one of our network sponsors. Welcome back to Carver Arena, where Westinghouse, as we get ready for the start of the third quarter, leads by five, 27-22. What do you look for, Bill, as we open up the second half of play? Well, I think Westinghouse is going to come up with the same kind of intensity defensively that they played in the first half. Um, it's been successful for them, and I think we're going to see from New Trier just a little bit different way of handling that pressure in the backcourt. It bothered them, as uh, Coach Malnati said uh, before. Um, I think they'll be better with the ball. With both of these teams, you know, they're going to they're going to do what the, has got them there. And so we're not going to see a lot of adjustments. They're going to be minor. It's just going to be a matter of who can make big shots when they need them. Rick Malnati finishing his sixth year with 136 victories, 39 losses. There is Darius Glover, who was their leading scorer in the first half with seven points. And are underway as Westinghouse opens up the third quarter with the basketball. Jamal Brown missing from the corner. And 
New Trier with a chance to whittle down this five point lead. Westinghouse staying in the zone. Very mobile back and forth zone defense. From the corner, Goodman. His first miss of the game, but the rebound tipped out front to Romy. Romy gets an open look. Can't hit the shot, but good hustle by Brett Sortle. From the corner, Goodman, and he misses two in a row. He's proved to be a mere mortal. And in the battle for the rebound, Ted Rosinski picks up the foul. That, that was a, um, when, when you shoot threes, they, the rebounds have a tendency to go long. And Westinghouse had pretty good position. They just didn't get bodies on them long enough. Rosinski getting his first foul. As Jamal Brown, up ahead it goes now. That's coming off the bench, Anthony Bennett at that last whistle. Ellis, they got to find a way to get him back into the groove. He didn't shoot well from the first half, but he misses his first shot in the second half. It's poked away from Rosinski by Ellis, who stayed with it and got the bucket. You know, that might be that what he needs to ignite himself a little bit. Uh, he, he's had some nice looks. He just hasn't put them down. Patient offense against the zone as you get it around to Rosinski the quick hands Glover stole it right away picked his pocket Westinghouse does a great job of when the ball goes to the wing they double it and they don't give you a shot and they don't give you a good pass out Jamal Brown driving to the baseline dumps it back out to Ellis Ellis leans in left-hander off the heel and the rebound taken out of there by big Bob Anderson Rosinski, the entry pass down low to Anderson. He was trying to make his move, but Glover poked it away. Seven point lead as Rick Malnati sees his club trying to work on this lead. They have led only once in this game at 2 0. Anderson fires it out front. Brett Sortle rattles home a two-pointer. He was on the line. He gets the two. His first two of the basketball game. You know, right now what, what um, New Churn could use is, is someone other than Josh Goodman hitting a shot from the perimeter. That would do wonders for, for their confidence. Jamal Brown throws it back out front to Bennett. Now they get it low to Glover. Kicks it back outside. Bennett for the three. A bit long. And the rebound out of bounds off the hand of Josh Goodman and Westinghouse keeps it. That's really great basketball movement on the part of Westinghouse. They kick it into Glover. He brings a crowd to him and he finds the shooter on the top. Uh, the inbounds pass. Sortle got a piece of it but saved just in time by Glover. Brown misses it in the lane. And it's out of bounds off of Trevig in again, and Westinghouse gets another look at it. Tom, you see how that when they get to the to the paint, when the perimeter or the perimeter drivers for Westinghouse get to the paint, creates a lot of problems because they got it, it, it attracts defensive help and they don't have an opportunity to rebound that. Nikitas and Larkin in for New Trier replacing Bob Anderson and Josh Goodman. Anthony Bennett in the corner. Jamal Brown for three. Got it. Third three of the game for Jamal Brown. He's got nine. And a 30-second timeout for Westinghouse. They've stretched out the lead to eight at 32-24, but Chris Head saw something he didn't like, and he wants to talk it over with his team. Yeah, I think what, what we're going to see is a little bit of different uh, pressure um, in the backcourt right now. They're going to give a different look to, to where they're pressing. See right there, Jamal Brown has been big for Westinghouse. He, he's making New Trier play them honestly on the perimeter. When you think of a traditional public league school, you think of inside oriented, in the paint, power basketball. And the job that Westinghouse has done, especially in this game, of showing the deadly shooting from outside has been a real big difference in departure from previous public league teams. Right, they, they do a great job of, of finding the person they want to be taking that shot on the perimeter and getting them the ball at the right time. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. Sortle, look for the bounce pass, kicked out of bounds, and Nutrier keeps it. You know, in the first half, we saw Westinghouse 
in a full court, one, two, one, one zone press. They put pressure immediately on the ball. What we're seeing right now is a little bit different look, a two, two, one. Off the baseline, in and out it goes for Nikitas, but out to Sortle, and he hits it, squished it from outside the arc. Fred Sortle with his first tray of the game, he's got five, and a five-point lead for Westinghouse. Bennett, his pass looking for Anderson, deflected, Nikitas comes up with it. James Romy. Weaves his way across the paint, kicks it off to Rosinski, driving shot, partially blocked by Russell, and it's out of bounds to Nutrier. We've got a timeout on the floor, four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Westinghouse leading by five is, we'll be back after these words from your local stations. from Westinghouse cheering on their faithful here at Carver Arena and we're going to cheer on Lee Hall. All right, thanks a lot, Tom. I'm here with uh, Richard Russell's sister, Rakita. She plays for the Westinghouse girls team. 32-27, uh, you guys get nervous this time? Yeah, we get nervous because it's kind of close, but I think we're going to pull it out in the end. Now, you told me you played on the girls' team. Who's better, you or Richard? Me. You know I am. <laughs> now, can you back that up, or is that just talk now? I can back it up. <laughs> Who's going to win this one? What's the house going to win? And then we going to come here tonight, and then we going to take state. All right, you heard it here first, Tom. Back to you. That'd be a mean game of horse right there, I guarantee you. Nutri with the ball, trailing by five, driving in. A little out of control, and they're going to call the blocking foul on Westinghouse Richard Russell. Just didn't get there quite in time to get his feet planted. That was a good call by the official. Russell gets his first, just the first team foul in this half for Westinghouse. Both teams so far in this quarter are two of seven from the field. Well, again, I think that's a, a tribute to the defensive intensity that we're seeing here today. Both of these teams are very aggressive defensively. Brett Sortle, a 68% foul shooter, misses his first try, and that's one thing that, that the Nutri did not do well yesterday in the win over Highland Park, and that is shooting free throws as Clyde Crosby comes in replacing Richard Russell for Westinghouse. Yeah, I think Coach wants to remind him of where he belongs, help side defense on that out bounds play. He gets the second. Sortle now with six and a four-point Westinghouse lead. As Bennett now over to Crosby. And on the sidelines, Jamal Brown. Crosby. It's stolen away by Sortle. Sortle stumbles, goes down, and he's fouled by Jamal Brown, who gets his first. That's a great individual effort by Brett Sortle there, stripping the ball. Kind of got himself under, out, out of control, as you can see him coming down there. A little, little bump. I think his intention was always to dish it off, just didn't get an opportunity. One thing I will say about New Trier, they're a little bit longer. Here we get another look at that play. Just a little reaching as Jamal Brown was going by, but he picked up his first foul. New Trier's guards and players are a little bit longer armed than you would think. They, ma they make some difficult passes for the uh, Westinghouse guards here up on the top. After the Larkin miss, here's Westinghouse on the wing, Anthony Bennett. Missed the medium range jumper, offensive rebound Glover, and then a whistle underneath. And New Trier is going to pick up another foul. This one's going to be on Brett Sortle, his second. You know, he did a nice job of getting his body in between Darius Glover and the basket. Glover is so strong, he just moved him underneath so that he had a better rebounding position than uh, Dan Larkin did. Eight points now for Glover as Brandon Williams checks back in for Westinghouse. Nick Nikitas comes in. Double check that. That's Coughlin now that just came in. And here's Josh Goodman now back in as Nikita heads to the Nutria bench. Darius Glover now with nine. And 
it's a six-point lead at 34-28 Westinghouse. Have a little bit smaller Westinghouse lineup out here right now. Let's see if they're more aggressive defensively. They get it up ahead. Goodman, and he, he can get inside and score there, too. Great ball movement there from Nutrier. Yeah, they let him out of the trap right over the center line, and he was able to find him underneath the basket. Ball nearly thrown away against the Nutria pressure, but Westinghouse keeps it. Ellis cutting into the paint. Lost it, stolen away by Romy. Up ahead to Coughlin. Pops up for the shot that rims around and out of the strong rebound. Skying high, Anthony Bennett. And he'll bring it up court. Pushes it up ahead to Williams. And blocking foul called. A blocking foul called on the Nutria defender. And that's going to be called on Larkin position in time. You can see him, see the tail end of that. He's got his feet planted, but he moved up. He was already in the air. Has a tough call, but it was a good call. He had already left the ground. Larkin got his first. It's the third team foul in the half on Trier. Nikitas comes back in, and Rosinski goes out, and again, he has scored just two points in the basketball game. They have held him in check well under his per game average of nearly 11 a contest. And the free throw good for Williams. Into the front court. Nikita's almost lost it. Poked away from behind by the quick hands. Brandon Williams, and here comes Westinghouse. Here's Ellis, Jamarcus Ellis. Shaking and baking. Out it goes Jamal Brown, three. Brown with 12, his fourth three-quarter of the ball game, and it's a 10-point lead just like that. Westinghouse is up 40 to 30. Three-point play on the last possession, a big three on this turnover right here. Takes a close game and gives Westinghouse some cushion. Um, what Coach Malnati is telling his kids right now, you can't get it back on one possession, don't try to. Westinghouse has done a great job of attacking the ball and then trailing it and stripping them from behind. That's something that Nutrier has to adjust to. This is an 8-2 run right now for Westinghouse. You know, when, uh, when teams in talk... Just, uh, in just a, a few days, a lot of these players on the Nutria basketball team are also on the baseball team. Brett Sortle, James Romy, Bob Anderson, and Ted Rosinski. He's got to play baseball. His dad's a former Cub infielder. And so, you know, if we had Dan Larkin, they'll be on a spring trip down to Carbondale, Illinois, for a baseball trip in just 10 days. So they'll be going from uh, three-pointers to sliders and curveballs in just a matter of days, and, and it'll be time for baseball. That's tough to make that adjustment, and, and um, I think that's a tribute to what kind of athletes they are. This is the biggest lead in the ball game for Westinghouse, a 10-point lead. Their biggest had been nine in the first half, but again, an 8-2 run right now has got New Trier down by double digits with two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter at Carver Arena as we look at the man from Marion High School who came up north to entertain the folks here this afternoon in Peoria. Still a lot of time left in this basketball game. I doubt Westinghouse feels safe at all with a 10-point lead, especially after what they saw that Josh Goodman did back in that second quarter. Rosinski's back in the game, and he can't find anybody to inbound the ball to, and he had to burn a timeout. What they do is they match up with their 2-2-1, they match up with the guards, make, makes the only pass open a long pass, which they don't want to, Nutria doesn't want to take. So far this year, Nutria scored as, as many as 89 in a win against Elmwood Park, and well, they had some battles this year with uh, arch rival Evanston held to a season low 44 by the Wildcats. New Trier, 25 and 6 on the year out of the Central Suburban South. And Ted Rosinski, 
He has led this neutral team in scoring and rebounding, averaging just under 18 points and eight rebounds a game. And again, he has been held to two points. He got the first two in the game for the only neutral lead and hasn't scored since. Right, they've done, a, again, a great job on the perimeter guarding him. And, and James Romy has not scored either. And I think both of those guys, uh, Rick Malnati needs uh, to, to step up in the last 10 minutes of this ball game. The faithful have come from the north suburbs. The chair on New Trier, who is looking to go to the finals for the first time since 1973. Nick Nikitas bounces over to Goodman. Now Coughlin looking to get it back to Goodman. Broken up nicely over on the sidelines by Brandon Williams. And it's going to be out of bounds to Westinghouse in the scramble for the loose ball. Anthony Bennett did a great job on that play, uh, anticipating the pass from the cornerback to the wing. Got his hand on it and deflected it, caused the turnover. Red Sortle has come back in off the Nutrier bench. And now checking back in Richard Russell, one of the starters for Westinghouse. Weaving his way through traffic. Nice dish up ahead, but Glover can't finish the play. Offensive board missed again, this time by Russell. Do they get another chance? Russell scores. He's fouled. He'll go to the line. Just relentless pounding of the glass by Westinghouse. You know, uh, we, we saw Chris Head get in uh, Richard Russell's face uh, at one of the earlier timeouts, and, and all it did is motivate him to do that. Go one rebound, two rebounds, back up with a basket and a, and a uh, three-point attempt. He just did a great job establishing his position inside and never, never relinquished that, 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 no. that, that territory. There is mom, Richard Russell's mom, looking onward, and, well, can you blame her for the big smile on her face? Now 17 points off of turnovers in this contest for Westinghouse, and Russell looking for the three-point play. And he completes it, giving him three points for the ball game, and it's now a 13-point Westinghouse lead. This is an 11-2 run for the Warriors. Rosinski up ahead and getting banged around was Brett Sortle. Near steal. In fact, uh, Jamal Brown got off the deck with a big grin on his face. He nearly picked up another steal right there. That was perfectly executed 2-2-1 two -two press. They forced the ball to go up on the sidelines where they can trap it. It just were a step slow getting there. You saw Darren Gafford come in just a moment ago, number 22. He's playing with a completely different kind of mission. A couple of weeks ago, he lost his sister and his niece tragically in a fire. Rosinski, there is Gafford with the steal. And he scores off the steal. Lost his sister, Latasha Walton, and his niece in the fire two weeks ago, and he's playing with a completely different level of emotion. The Westinghouse bench has been really big today. Anthony Bennett has been a force in the second half. Um, that, that young man came in, made a big steal in a basket. Take a look off the bench. Uh, Gafford getting his first two. Russell has picked up three. Uh, also off the bench, uh, uh, Randon Williams has scored five. Bennett has scored five in the game off the bench. Great depth for Westinghouse. And you take a look at the, one of the glaring and maybe most telling statistics of this basketball game. Let's go into the huddle and Rick Malnati. Okay, if we lose, it's kind of press and play. Can you do it? You make a passive play, you're coming out for us in the game. Everything you do is going to be aggressive. Sort of. That's not how we got here. That's not how we're going to end. Defensively. We're going to 22 to double fist. you got to make plays. 22, they'll fuck up. you got to make plays. Well, free throw should go to Malay. Let's go. Wow, that was some intensive huddle there from Rick Malnati. Yeah, I think he's very disappointed with the last two minutes, starting with that three-point basket by Russell. Russell, they, they've lost some of their intensity, their edge, and, and he just they, he's challenging the kids that you got to step up. This is a big game, you've got to step up. I think the biggest question he asked in that huddle, and he looked at him right in the eye and said, can you do it? So he's challenging his ball club right here as they're down by 15 points. The three rimming short for Romy. And Brown comes up with it, pushes it down court to Glover. Glover with the leaner. No, off the glass, Nutria the rebound. The other way quickly, Josh Goodman. Nice lead pass to Sortle. 
And then is a block committed by Crosby trying to come up with the steal. And that's what Westinghouse is trying to do almost every nutrient possession right now, trying to come up with the steal and the takeaway. Well, you know, they have a 15-point lead, and there's still time for Nutria to get back in the game. But what happens is every turnover that they can cause is another dagger. Just four team fouls in the first half for the Warriors. Coughlin into the front court. Has a bit of a seam, jumps the pass over. Rosinski still just two points in the game as he missed the outside jumper. Just over a minute for the third quarter. This has been the quarter that Westinghouse has taken control and opened up a 15 point lead. Five Crosby. Now Glover. Driving. A little one on one. Now we're under a minute. Hands it off to Jamal Brown. Down along the lane, Russell. Good patience, good ball movement. The scoreboard's on their side, the clock's on their side. Good clock management right now. And every time New Church tries to get a double team, the Warrior ball handler is able to find an open man. Glover brings it back outside, 32 seconds. Gets it down low, and the lay in good. Nice feed from Glover to Richard Russell. Excellent penetration, good pass off. Russell with five, all in this third quarter. 19 seconds, and it's a 17 point lead. This is now a 15 to two run for Westinghouse. Nikita's from the corner, got it, give him a three. His second three of the game, he's got eight. And we have reached the end of the third quarter. As with one quarter to go, it's a 14-point lead for Westinghouse. Coming up the fourth quarter after we hear from our network sponsors. Take a look at some of the sights and sounds of March Madness here in downtown Peoria. Still coming up, we've got the Class AA semifinals along with the three-point showdown. And then Lanfear and Centralia, followed by the King of the Hill in terms of the slam dunk and then the head-to-head the -head three-point matchup as well. Lots of action on the floor here at Carver Arena. And Westinghouse right now eight minutes away from a berth in the championship game for the second time in three years. In that quarter, Nutria went four of 13 from the field, while Westinghouse went seven of 16. Yeah, many of those were transition baskets uh, off, off of turnovers. And uh, of course, we said several times that that was going to be a big factor in this ball game. A 9-8 edge, rebounding edge for Westinghouse in the quarter. Westinghouse outscoring them by 14 points in that quarter. After the steal, Crosby stepped on the sidelines and Nutria will keep the basketball. It's a gambling defense now for Westinghouse. A absolutely, what a great play by Clyde Crosby. Got knocked down, got up, and, and almost made a, a big play steal. Off the pressure break, driving in, the shot off the glass too hard for Mike Duda. And here comes Westinghouse. Ball stripped away and the loose ball picked up. Brett Sordo. Sordo goes all the way and drew the foul. Crosby fouled him and Sordo will go to the free throw line. You know, Tom, certainly Westinghouse has been the aggressor and has the advantage. But the way they shoot three-point shots, there's plenty of time with a couple turnovers and big baskets for um, Nutri to get back in the game. Brett Sordle, his grandfather Harry Sordle, played for Ziegler and went to the Sweet 16 in 36 and 37, losing to Vandalia both those years. In 39, Ziegler and Sordle defeated Roodhouse before losing to Rockford in the quarterfinals at Old Huff Gym. And later, Harry Sordle went on to coach one of the legendary programs at Paris, Illinois, and coached them to the 1950 quarterfinals where they lost to the Freeport Pretzel, 69-56. So quite a basketball heritage for Brett Sordle. Sordle now with seven. A 13-point lead for Westinghouse. They got the dish. Ellis did down low, but Westinghouse decided to bring it back outside and look maybe for a better chance. Ellis. 
Westinghouse working it on the perimeter. Westinghouse is showing a little bit of a spread offense right now. He stepped out of bounds. Yeah, he stepped out of bounds, Ellis did, and turned it over. We have seen both ends of Jamarcus Ellis in the tournament so far yesterday and today, and you see very much that he is a sophomore, and that he is, while one of the most talented sophomores around, but he's still a sophomore. You know, there he is. What, what you're trying to do with, with, a, with that kind of talent is to get him to, to play within his ability. Oh, what a steal by Glover. Anticipated the pass beautifully, but he couldn't get the shot to go. The battle for the offensive tip. Controlled underneath there by Russell, and Russell scores. And we got a timeout after the bucket. Russell gets his seventh all in the second half. A 15-point lead and a quick timeout for Chris Head. Radco Supply Corporation and Owens Corning, makers of vinyl siding and shingles, are proud to be sponsors of this year's Illinois High School Association State Basketball Tournament. Of course, the home of America's original March Madness. And they wish the best of luck to New Trier and Westinghouse and all the teams in the semifinals today. A look onward at the Westinghouse bench. This team has been so focused. They were up practicing at 5.30 Tuesday, and, uh, Wednesday and Thursday of this week. We take a look through three quarters and Nutri not shooting the way they need to shoot to stay in this ball game. Westinghouse not shooting well, but their defense is doing the number for them. Yeah, another key on that stat is the six for 12 Westinghouse has in three points. That's something you got to give up something and, and uh, Nutri gambled on giving up the outside and they're paying for it. And a big A for Attitude, the IHSA Attitude mascot. Here with us on the floor at Carver Arena. Coming up, Lanfear and Centralia. The winner of this game will meet the winner of that game tonight for the AA State Championship. The two teams that come out on the short end this afternoon will meet in the consolation game, the battle for third place tonight as well. We'll have all that for you coming up on your local IHSA TV network station later on today and tonight. A minute gone in the fourth quarter. New Trier with the ball. Got to make something happen in a hurry. The Trevians trail by 15. Out front, Brett Sortle. Now over to Romy. Romy's been held. 10 points under his average so far today. He has not yet scored. Brozinski. Now from the corner, the long three misses. And the offensive rebound controlled by Clyde Crosby. Jamal Brown will set up the half-court offense. Kicks it off to Glover. The Glover had Bob Anderson right there defending. What Westinghouse is trying to do, they, they want to continue to be aggressive going to the basket. They just want to make sure that each time down the court they get a real good look. Russell missed off the nice feed, and Anderson came away with the rebound. Sortle fires it over to Roney. Now over on the wing, Rosinski, and he ends the long draw. He hits the three. His first point since he scored the first two points of the basketball game. You know, shooters are, some shooters are very streaky. It wouldn't surprise us to see him hit two or three more. Jamal Brown goes baseline. Ball tipped out of bounds by Nutrier, and it'll still be Westinghouse basketball. 5.42 remaining as Nikitas comes in for Nutrier, and Josh Goodman heads for the bench. Jamal Brown. Had a look inside now, decides to back it out along the sidelines. Now he'll try to penetrate again. Backs it away again. Looking for just a bit of an edge over there as he works against Romy. Now driving down in the lane, a nice kick down to Russell. No, he charged. The charge taken inside by Nikitas. You know, they, you, you see him, he just comes under control. Rosinski steps up big time. There's been two or three others very close where they're, either your officials didn't see enough contact, maybe a little slow getting there. Uh, Nutra does a good job in Westinghouse, too, of, of getting in position on the drivers. Six team fouls now in Westinghouse. The next foul will put Nutra into the bonus, which may help. Could help them narrow the gap with the clock stopped. 5-12 remaining, and it's a 12-point lead for Westinghouse. 
Every possession, a precious possession right now for the Trevians. Anderson double teamed, might have forced the play there, was able to get it back, tip it over to Nikitas. Uh, driving inside, Romy. Nikita spins away, trying to dump it inside, blocked by Russell. Well, they got a break on getting that ball back after Anderson tried to put it up in traffic, and then uh, just another defensive effort by Westinghouse. Crosby, now Glover, nice feet down inside, getting behind the defense and putting it up and in. Richard Russell, all nine of his points in the second half. Great feed. Did a nice job sealing his man. Guard found him, nice pass. 14-point edge for Westinghouse. Trying to get to the title game for the second time in three years. They lost to West Aurora two years ago. The three misses for Rosinski. And then their Trier came up with a rebound. Anderson got it, and he was held and fouled. Uh, foul correction is on Anderson. The foul is on Anderson. And that's now five on New Trier in the half. We're getting to the point in the game pretty quickly where they're they're going to need to foul him and uh, gamble that they can hit some threes. Ellis, who came back in the ball game, replacing Williams, and now Ellis, the sophomore, jumps it ahead to Crosby. High post looking for Russell, nearly stripped away. Ellis, a little behind the back move. Down low it goes to Russell for the lay-in. Boy, has Russell been big in the second half for Westinghouse. Those have been key uh, uh, key baskets. They, you know, when you're gambling, you give up something. They're giving that basket under, under the looks underneath the basket. And what an assist by Ellis on that play. Blocking foul called is going for the hoop was Romy, and he'll go to the free throw line as Russell picked up his third. Good drive to the basket. Richard Russell, again, just maybe a, a, a step, a slow establishing position. You see there on that replay that his feet just aren't down and set. That's a good call. 344 remaining. And James Romy who had 11 points in their stunning win over Proviso East in the Super Sectionals last Tuesday, picks up his first point in the ball game. Larkin heads out, and Mike Duda comes back in for the Treviers. An opportunity now with a bonus, but he missed the free throw to try to narrow the gap without the clock moving. 15-point Westinghouse lead. Jamal Brown threw it over the head of Ellis, but covering him on the play, Clyde Crosby. Crosby on the drive, down inside it goes to Russell. Great feed again, Crosby, the assist to Russell, who's got 13. What we're seeing now, Westinghouse spreading the court. Nutrier has to play aggressive on the ball. When they do that, it opens up lanes to the basket. And uh, when the help comes to stop penetration, it leaves someone open underneath. Westinghouse now 22 to 4, an advantage in points in the paint. Driving in a sort of rejected by Ellis, but he took the big wind up swat at it. And 99 times out of 100, you do that, you're going to get called for the foul. Yeah, but he stepped strong. And I think Coach Head likes, wants to see him be aggressive on that help side defense. A little slow getting there um, and, a, and a nice move to the basket uh, by Sordal. Let's hear some of the sounds of the game on that last play. Two to four, an advantage in points in the paint. Driving in sort of rejected by Ellis, but... Free throw misses, and right now, Nutrier not firing on all cylinders. No, nah, they're really questioning themselves right now. Brandon Williams going to check back in now, replacing Russell. He's going to get a breather after he has scored 13 points in the second half. There goes Russell heading to the Warrior bench, 3-0-1 remaining. And he missed them both. Sortle 2 of 5 from the free throw line now for the game. New Church trying some full court pressure. There's the steal by Rosensky. Over it goes. Here is Romy, but it won't go in for him. Offensive rebound, Rosensky. He's not giving up. He continued to battle on the boards. Now he's got seven. 55-40. Finds 
Alex Glover down low. Nice floater along the baseline. And a timeout called by Westinghouse. Darius Glover now with 11 points to go with his 17 yesterday. This IHSA broadcast is brought to you by Country Insurance and Financial Services. Real people, real answers, real quick. Westinghouse with a 17-point lead. And let's go over now to our colleague Lee Hall. The uh, new Trier section and some long faces, some long faces. It's Nikita's time. I don't know if you can see me or not, but I got my Nikita's helmet on. Uh, Mary, we understand Mary's the loudest member of the Trevians crowd. Let's hear it, Mary. I think she is. Brandon, my, my correspondent from yesterday, is here too. Uh, Nutri, you guys got a, a great reputation down here. Great fans, very enthusiastic. What's so special about Nutri fans? I think everyone just gets really involved. They follow, they travel during the season, they travel during the state tournament, and they just really go everywhere, you know, they go everywhere with the team. They're really involved, they're really positive. They are negative, there's not a lot of negative cheering, and yes, we do what we can. <laughs> No negative cheering. I seem to remember them yelling, how'd you get here to Highland Park yesterday? I, now that's, now that's just bad. Oh, okay, okay. How did they get here? How did they get here? That's still the question. Uh, so, you know, we'll see you guys here tonight. All right, it's Nikita's time, but they might be running out of time, but still, are you guys still into this game or what? Lee Hall showing some of that hard-headed, I mean, hard-headed determination that he showed on the high school basketball floor. 2.20 remaining, 17-point lead for Westinghouse, and time slipping away for New Trier. And with every tick of the clock, Westinghouse gets a little closer to another berth in the state championships. Terry Coughlin, the 6-2 senior, getting his first point as he hits the free throw. It fell apart on New Trier late in the third quarter when the Warriors ran on a 13-0 run just before Nikita's hit a three to end the quarter. That was a four-point game there, Tom, and a three-point play by Russell, and then a big three-point basket by Jamal Brown to, to give him a 10-point lead. And, and New Trier was playing catch-up big time after that. Brandon Williams picked up a foul. Take a look so far in this game. New Trier shooting just 36% from the field. Westinghouse 43%. And New Trier continuing a trend from yesterday, not shooting well from the free throw line. Yeah, Jamal Brown with a little push off there, and I, I think there was some good acting involved as well. And as a coach, you've never ever told a player to ever exaggerate it just a little bit. Never. <laughs> All right, maybe once. All right, maybe once. It was at one time. James Romy at the free throw line, averaging just under 10 points a game, but has scored just one point in the Saturday semifinal game. And he picks up another free throw. For New Trier, they got a hope with the clock stopped here in 217 to hit their free throws and narrow the gap any way they can. They have to use their timeouts, hope for a couple threes, make sure if they get to the line that they sink their free throws. And if you're Westinghouse, you want to be careful with the ball, take a little bit of time off on each possession. Little reach around foul there. Duda reaching around Clyde Crosby is due to try to trap him right there just across the midcourt line. Yeah, you probably don't want to reach in in a, a situation like that where you have an advantage. There's not too many places he can go with his back to the basket right across the center line. 2.09 remaining. And Clyde Crosby, whose nickname called by his coach, described by his coach, Chris Ed, is Mr. Energetic. He's full of enthusiasm and hustle and helps keep his team loose. And the free throw good, and there's Mr. Energetic's mom up there. As Clyde Crosby just picks up his third point of the basketball game. And a lot of support that moms and dads and brothers and sisters give to these players. A lot of sacrifices on the family, helping 
their player become as complete and as good a player as they can become on and off the floor. 15 point lead for Westinghouse. Rosinski's got an open three, rims it off, and the rebound Glover. Rebounds right now, 20, I should say 31 24 edge for Westinghouse. And banked in there nicely by Randon Williams, who's got seven. Nice job for him coming off the bench. And Glover, big rebound, takes the ball up the court, finds the open man, and assist. Nikitas long on the three, and it caroms out of bounds, and Westinghouse gets it back with a minute 34 to go. New Trier with team state titles in 2000 in baseball, 1959 in cross country, great golf program there as well as gymnastics. On the girls' side, seven badminton titles, field hockey, golf, 10 titles in swimming, seven in tennis, volleyball, a state championship, a well-rounded athletic program there at New Trier. And a whistle the other day, one of our crew members was asking me, now is this Nutrier East or West? I said, no, no, we're old guys. We remember those. It's now just <laughs> one Nutrier up in Winnetka. And that was some rivalry when those two schools were coexisting together. Tom, I really don't even want to say this on, on the air, but I'm old enough to remember when it was just Nutrier the first time around. Ditto. Glover's at the free throw line. He's 11 points in the ball game. Four in this half. He's three of four from the line, as you see. And he gets a kind roll off the iron. And it's now an 18 point lead at 62 44. You know, you, you have a player like Darius Glover. And, and even if he doesn't score a lot of points, he disrupts things because he makes you guard him so intensely that it opens something else up. From the corner, the rainbow three missing for Goodman, who has lost the touch that he had in the first half, but battling on the offensive boards. Ted Rosinski, he's now got nine. And Nutra calls a timeout. Their last timeout, they're going to bring in Coughlin and Duda at this whistle. By the way, at the last whistle, Stephen Collins checked in for Westinghouse. Coming up next, it'll be Centralia and Lanfear in the second semifinal game. The two losers from the semis will play for the third place title in the game that will bring your way at 6.30. Then following that at approximately 8 o'clock will be the 2002 Class AA State Championship. Culminating a tradition that began in this city with the first state champion crowned in Peoria in 1908. It was a cold spring that year, wasn't it, Bill? Well, I, I said I remember some stuff. I don't remember that. <laughs> and coming up, of course, the three-point showdown. And then the king of the hill is Chris Head's proud and supporting wife. You know, it's always interesting. He gets the point. I ain't got it in bounds. I want a timeout. You understand that? We have one. But you know all these strong-willed coaches, you get them at home, and we all know who's boss at home. We, we definitely <laughs> yes, do. Yes, exactly. You know, I think Chris Head has done a, a really outstanding job with this program. He expects things from his players and will not accept anything but their best. When, when a husband and wife combination as a coach, you're not just a coach and a wife, you're also in many ways surrogate parents because those players are spending more time with you and your staff than they probably are at home, especially during the season. Absolutely. I, I watched just a very little thing that happened right before us off camera. Chris, Chris Head was talking to one of his players and the player started to walk away from him. And he stopped him, made the player stop and face him and listen to his, what he had to say. That's a small thing, but it's a big thing. Stephen Collum at the free throw line, and he gets his first points of the basketball game. Collum, a 5'8 senior. 70 seconds left in the semifinal game, and right now it's looking like 70 seconds left in New Trier's amazing season. Rosinski comes up with the rebound. 
Sortle. The Westinghouse best saying, don't follow him. And the three coming up short for Goodman. After he hit those five for five, he hasn't hit another one since. He's been right there, but you know, he, he, doubt, he began to doubt himself a little bit. It's so hard for a shooter. Off balance and a player control foul called against Parit Smith. The foul drawn by Josh Goodman, who, by the way, Goodman now has missed his last five three-pointers after hitting his first five. And it's back in the first half, and New Trier clearing the bench as well, bringing in the likes of Lewis Powell and Kevin Hearn. And others coming in now with 47 seconds to go. Give those players a chance to play here on the Carver Arena floor in the state finals. The three-pointer no good for Thomas Purcell. The shot missing, Lewis Powell. Battle for the loose ball on the deck. And we got a held ball. And the possession arrow will give it to Westinghouse. And Edward Whitaker will check in now with this whistle. It's not the way, and you heard him even in the huddle saying this is not the way we want to go out, but it still has been an amazing ride for New Trier, and Westinghouse will keep it going again. Long faces on the Trevigan bench, but boy, did they stun the basketball world in Illinois with their win over Proviso East at the United Center last Tuesday. Yeah, that, that was a, a, a huge victory, and they played so well in that ball game. I think if you look at the ball game today, you're, you're looking at the, the quickness really bothered New Trier, and they didn't shoot the ball well. Seven seconds ago, and we have a quick final timeout for one last substitution is coming in now Courtney Thornton for Westinghouse. This copyrighted broadcast is presented for the entertainment and non-commercial use of our audience. Any reproduction or other use of this program without the express written consent of the Illinois High School Association is strictly prohibited. Tom Stocker, Bill hit with you at Carver Arena. Just seven seconds left. And there you take a look at the Westinghouse bench. They're going to play for the state championship here tonight. Already right in front of us, Rick Malnati's already come down to congratulate Chris had him. and Rick said yesterday, talked about the large amount of respect that he has for Chris Head and the Westinghouse program. And I know he just wished him best of luck tonight in the finals. Yeah, you know what? They they want the same thing, obviously. They want to win all their games, but they also want the same thing from their players. They want them to be competitors and good people. It's all over. A 63 46 victory, and Westinghouse is going to the championship game for the second time in three years. The Warriors get their 28th victory of the season. And the traditional exchanging of handshakes following this semifinal contest. Chris Head chalks up win number 106 in his career. He had a team that went 32 and 2 two years ago. And this one, he says, has been a different kind of a team. It's required a little bit more of an adjustment from him because of his emotional style. And he's had to be more patient with this Westinghouse ball club. A lot of celebrating going on on the court as Westinghouse getting ready to go to the finals. And in just a moment, we're going to send it over now. And let's see. Here from the victorious coach, along with one of the leaders of this Westinghouse ball club. Let's go now right over to Lee Hall. All right, Tom, thanks a lot. Uh, Chris said you guys showed some good shooting from outside today. Yeah, we did show some good shooting from outside. But I'm pretty proud of our defense. You know, it was the best defensive ever we did all year. I'm, so I'm pretty proud of it. Going back to the state championship, you were there. You made it this far in 2000. How does that help you tonight? It helps us a lot. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, we're happy to be there, but we really, really, really want to win. So, you know, we're going to do what it takes, and we're going to come out here and try to win later on tonight. All right, good luck to you, Coach. All right. Sure. Uh, Jamal Brown's here, too. Making a mess out here, Jamal. Congratulations. Great shooting afternoon for you. Uh, yeah, I just, you know, just tried to come out. tried to throw it inside first. Once the inside won't work, and then kick it out to the guard, you know, make a uh, three-point shot so we can come out with a win. 
Coach talked about your guys' defensive effort. Can you talk about that? You guys held Nutrier up very low today. Defense. I, I say this is the best defense game we ever played. We just got one more. We play defense like this and a little bit more. We got to stay town. First day town. Coach was talking uh, in the papers earlier today about uh, how Chicago teams come down to state and they treat it like just another game. You guys haven't done that. We talk, like, I said, like I said before, we ain't overlooking nobody. You know, um, Glen Bar North, the West Aurora overlooked them. Even though they beat them, you know, twice, about uh, double digits, we weren't overlooking nobody, you know. So um, next week we got, um, what, Springfield Lanford, uh, Centralia. Hopefully it's Springfield Lanford. That's who we want. Right. So oh, either one, we'll take either one, uh, either team, try to get a win. Right. Uh, DeAndre Billingsley is here, too. Thanks, Jamal. I'm sorry, who? Well, they got your number wrong then. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see the four. Darius, I'm sorry. Uh, tell me about uh, about going for a state championship tonight, about making it this far. How important has that been to you? We treasure this all year. All year long, we tried to win in the state championship. And every game down here, we took it like it was our last, even though it was. We played, we prepared for every team. We ain't underestimate no teams. We're going to prepare for Springfield, Lampier, and Centralia, both teams, because we'll never know who's going to win. All right, Darius, good luck tonight. Thanks, man. I won't make that mistake again. <laughs> he had his towel over his number, and I'm a bonehead. Let's go to a local break. We'll be back, be back with a three-point shootout coming your way next from Carver Arena after this break. Thank you.